Hi, my name is Nick Miller. I'm the chair of the history department at Boise State. Um, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about what I do here, what I teach, what my research interests are, and then a few things about the department. Um, my own area of expertise is modern European history, more specifically Eastern European history, and my research has been on the Balkans, Southeast European history. Um, I've written on Serbian nationalism, Croatian-Serbian relations, other aspects of Yugoslav history. Uh, the courses I teach include courses on Stalinism, on nationalism, um, and a slight outlier, but an interest of mine is refugee movements, so I have a couple of classes on that topic as well. Um, I've been here for over 20 years. I think Boise State's a great place. Boise is a wonderful city. Uh, the department over the past few years has begun to reorient itself a little bit in the direction um, of kind of preparing you for life after, after university. Uh, this is an important transition that's taking place in most universities in the country. And in our case, what that means is we've been emphasizing internships, um, working classes that actually uh, prepares you for, I don't know, real world experiences, looking for jobs, finding jobs, using your writing and thinking skills. Um, the study of history also, I think, is of critical importance just to understanding kind of the world we live in today, especially today when so much complicated is going on. Um, you will have the opportunity to listen to a video, I think, from Bob Reinhardt, who's our in internship coordinator. I think you should. He's, um, he's kind of the dynamic uh, force behind that program, and he's made a lot of really good changes to it in the past few years. Um, otherwise, Joanne Klein, the associate chair, has also left a message for you. She's our lead advisor of undergrads. Uh, and also teaches modern European history, and I believe a few other of my colleagues are talking as well. Anyway, um, apologies for the shaky phone. Uh, thank you for listening in. Hope you'll check out my colleagues and others at the university today, uh, and I wish you the best. Hope to see you soon. Hi, I'm Professor Bob Reinhardt, and I'm in my third year at Boise State in the Department of History, where I teach and do research in the fields of public history, the history of public health, environmental history, U.S. history, and the history of the American West. This upcoming year, I'll be teaching three classes, one in the fall for first-year students. It's a university foundations course called History in the News, and in this course, we'll be focusing on putting current events in historical context to try to help us better understand where we are now and where we're going. I'll also be teaching a graduate course on public history, museums, archives, and other ways of doing history outside of education. And in the spring, I will teach a course on the history of the American West. I'm also the department's internship coordinator, which means that I get to work with students to help them find fantastic internship opportunities that will obviously provide credit, which goes towards your degree, provide experience, that really invaluable experience that you can use on your resume to be able to show potential employers the skills that you've developed, and then also expand your professional network, which is also critical in helping you find a job after you graduate. I'm also the founder and the director of the Working History Center, and this is a new initiative at Boise State where we're focused on demonstrating and advocating for the relevance and vitality of history, historical research, historical analysis, historical communication, all of these ways that history is so important and crucial to helping us do good work in the present and be ready for the future. You can find out more about the Working History Center, about our internship program, about our courses, and about me. If you want to contact me, please send me an email. You can find all that information at our website, boisestate.edu slash history. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you in the fall. Hello, my name is Joanne Klein, and I teach courses in European Socialism, European Film, uh, The Great War, World War I, and also Europe after 1945. So you can guess that I'm a historian of modern uh, Europe, and uh, I also teach courses on the history of police in Europe and America, and that draws on my area of research. I began studying British police history because I was kind of fascinated by how new they were. The British police force was only founded in 1829. Um, in my own research, I look at the everyday lives of the officers on patrol, just your average constable in this case. I look at everything from their recruitment and their training, through their careers, through their retirement. 
I also look at their lives not only at work but also at home. And I really do like exploring the lives of ordinary men and women both uh, at work um, and at home in my teaching as well as in my research. I have this nice nifty police helmet. It was given to me by the Deputy Chief Constable of the Greater Manchester Police. Um, as you can see, it has this very nice vent along the top with a very nice dragon wing detail. Um, and that the Northern police tend to have that detail unlike the Southern police. It's also hard, like a riding helmet and it's designed obviously so if someone hits them on the head, they have some protection. Uh, one of my favorite things to do um, besides teaching classes, I do love teaching classes, is meeting with students one-on-one. -on -one. I do a lot of undergraduate advising. Part of that, of course, is to go over your academic plans, go over internship options, travel abroad options, but I really love to explore what you hope to achieve and find ways to make your goals come true and make you know what you want to do happen after you graduate. Finally, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan because the Doctor travels in history um, in a police box, so how can I not love Doctor Who? So thank you, and I hope to see you around the blue. Hello, potential Broncos. My name is Jill Gill. I teach U.S. History at Boise State in the History Department. Uh, I teach um, classes on race, ethnicity and rights, uh, America in the 1960s. I teach American religious history. Um, and I teach a global human rights class. And I also uh, direct the Marilyn Schuler Human Rights Initiative. You may have guessed by now, but uh, I have a big interest in um, social justice issues. And I call myself an activist historian, which means that I think history has an active role to play in solving some of the confounding um, questions and problems that we deal with as a society. And we have been for hundreds of years. Um, it's important to know the roots of a problem before you can solve it. And so I teach history in a way that's directly tied to current day problems and questions. And again, the ones that compel me the most are ones that are connected to human rights. Um, so if that's an interest of yours, um, we've got a program up and running, um, uh, the Human Rights Certificate, that's designed to help give students um, not only head knowledge, but practical experience in doing social justice and leveraging history to empower that work. So um, I hope you consider joining us. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sean S. Nichols. I'm an assistant professor of history here at Boise State University. Uh, it's my second year teaching here. Uh, before coming to Boise, I got my BA in 2010 from Western Washington University in Bellingham, Washington, and I got my PhD in 2016 from Harvard University. Uh, my teaching and research center on the economic and social history of the United States and the world, uh, history of American capitalism, labor history, U.S. immigration, basically any subject area that allows me to really dig in to how the U.S. economy works, how it came together, and where it's going next. Uh, a particular interest for freshmen, I teach a UF 100 course on the history of American capitalism. If any of you are interested in that at all, I really highly urge you to take it. It's one of my favorite courses that I do here. I thought I might say just a few words about what got me interested in history. Look, uh, as a kid, I grew up in a poorer family, so I, I long had interests in, you know, big questions of inequality. Why are some nations so rich, others so poor? Why are some families rich, so rich? Why are others so poor? How does the economy choose its winners and losers, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I think what really kind of concretized it for me was my experiences during the economic cataclysm of 2008, which was a really trying year for me. Um, you know, at certain points in the year, uh, one point in the year, I ended up running out of money. I had to leave, uh, move out of my current apartment into this really gnarly hippie flop house that was infested with fleas, which was really disgusting. There was a, there was a summer, one summer in particular, where I just could not find a job anywhere decent, no matter how many, how hard I tried. I applied to everything. I eventually ended up working at this awful summer camp, uh, basically washing dishes and serving food uh, for working these kind of 14 hour days where I only got paid for six of them, uh, which was really awful. And I think like a lot of Americans, it kind of left me with this sense of what the heck happened? You know, what went wrong? Um, 
And in many ways, that has been the big driving question of the rest of my professional career, right? How does the economy work? How did it come together? And, you know, what goes wrong? How does it go wrong every once in a while? And what can we do about that? And I think history is a great way to think about those kind of big questions, because these are questions that other Americans and other people around the world have wrestled with for centuries. And the kind of successes and failures they have had can be a great guide for us in the present. So with that said, I hope you will join us. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is seannichols at boisestate.edu. Have a great Bronco day. Hi, I'm Katie Huntley. I'm the resident archaeologist and ancient historian here in the History Department at Boise State University. I teach courses on the ancient Mediterranean, so about the cultures of ancient Greece, Rome, Egypt, and Mesopotamia. You'd be surprised how uh, much the history of the ancient Mediterranean impacts us today, from uh, things like politics and government, to religion and philosophy, to ideas about gender and sexuality, and race and ethnicity. I challenge you to take one of my courses and find out. So the ancient peoples of the Mediterranean left us some really interesting evidence. And I want to tell you about my favorite work of uh, ancient literature, written by Roman in the first century CE. It's called the Satyricon, and it's an epic poem that's meant to be a parody of the Odyssey by Homer. Now, you might be familiar with the Odyssey. It's the tale of Odysseus cursed by the goddess Hera and forced to wander in search of his home. Uh, so the Satyricon is about a man named Encolpius, whose name means the crotch, uh, and he's been cursed by Priapus, the fertility god, and he uh, can't get it up. So it's about his search for his erection. Beyond being hilarious and very entertaining, the work actually tells us a lot about the ancient Romans, from their ideas about sexuality uh, to their perspectives on life and death and their sense of humor. It tells us about the lives of slaves and former slaves and other non-elites. It gives us insight into aspects of their daily lives, like eating and drinking practices. In fact, at one point, Encolpius, our protagonist, attends a lavish over-the-top dinner party hosted by a man named Trimalchio, who was a former slave and a nouveau riche. Now, the story of Trimalchio's dinner party might be familiar to you if you've read F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, because it was based on that story from the Satyricon. So I hope that gives you a little uh, taste of how interesting the ancient Mediterranean was, uh, and I hope to see you in class. Hi there, my name is Aida Meftahi. I'm a historian of modern Middle East. I am from Iran and I specialize on Iranian social and cultural history. I am a new faculty here at Boise State University and I feel very lucky to be among such an amazing student body. Here I teach several courses including modern Middle East, modern Iran, Islamic civilization, gender and sexuality in modern Middle East, as well as courses on performance, popular culture, cinema, and urban history of the Middle East. In my research, I'm particularly interested on the intersection of gender, politics, and performance. I'm currently working on my second book, which is centered on Tehran's historic entertainment district, uh, the street is called Lalazar Street and is often compared to New York's Broadway because it hosted a range of theatrical venues, cinemas, cafes and cabarets in early 20th century and it was the center for cultural production. If you join Boise State University, you will be hearing much more about Lalazar Street and other exciting places in the Middle East. Hi, my name is Lisa Brady. I'm a history professor here at Boise State. Welcome to Bronco Day 2020. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I teach environmental history here at Boise State, so I'm outside to talk to you about what it is that I do. 
Environmental history is the study of the ways that human communities and the natural world interact and shape each other over time. I'm also a military historian, so my focus is really on the ways that nature and war intersect. I teach courses on the Korean War, which is my current area of research, and I also teach courses on East Asian environmental history, global environmental history, and a great course called the Environmental Histories of Modern War. That class looks at the ways that war and nature have shaped each other in the 19th and 20th centuries and even today. One of the great things about that class is looking at the ways that conflict, which is terrible for humans, can actually be beneficial for nature. If you look at the trenches of World War I, you see a proliferation of lice and rats. Not our favorite creatures for sure, but they are part of nature and they benefited from that war. Another, perhaps better example, one that is a little bit less creepy, is the Korean DMZ. It's right now a de facto nature preserve, all because the two Koreas remain at war. We wouldn't want that to continue, of course. We want the Korean people to be unified if they themselves wish to be, and they do. But right now, nature has a preserve there at the 38th parallel within the Korean demilitarized zone. So those are the kinds of things that I study and the kinds of things that I teach. I also teach courses on East Asian environmental history, global environmental history, and an introductory course to environmental history, which is place-based learning, where students choose their favorite place and do some research into that place and its environmental history. I hope you're having a wonderful Bronco Day, and I hope to see you at Boise State. Please feel free to contact me at any time. My email is lisabrady at boisestate.edu. Thanks. Hi, my name is Dr. Lisa McLean, and I'm a history professor who specializes in the history of Christianity and gender, especially during the medieval era and the Renaissance and Reformation. It's my firm belief, prospective Broncos, that each of us needs to see ourselves in history. And to that end, my goal is that you will see a part of your story in every class that I teach. So whether it's a global Christianity class that takes us to the Holy Land and the United States in Europe, but also to places like Ethiopia and in India and in Japan and Mexico, to classes on the 16th century in which we talk about people from all walks of life, people just like each of us, from small children to the elderly, people of different abilities, people in different stations of life, from the homeless to workers to the top 1%. People of all genders and all sexual orientations. These are the stories of us, and they connect us as human beings, and they bridge centuries. And I'm reminded of this today, as a matter of fact, because uh, the coronavirus pandemic reminds me of a subject I teach about frequently in many of my courses, a uh, pandemic that uh, occurred in the 14th century across Europe and Asia and Northern Africa called the Black Death. Now, I'm not saying COVID-19 is as deadly as the Black Death, but diaries letters and records from that time period shows us that the people centuries ago were concerned with the same sorts of things we're worried about today. Economic concerns, political stability, house contagion spreads and how to stop it, social distancing, it's all there. And we also know from history that the pandemics don't last forever. And I hope it gives you some confidence to know that when pandemics end, it's often a time of great hope among societies, a great rise in creativity and innovation and economic prospects. So history shows us these pandemics don't last forever. We can get through them if we stick together. And so stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope I see you in the classroom soon. Do you want to study the history of war? Well, do you? If so, then I am here to tell you military history is alive and well here. I am David Walker, Associate Professor of Military History at Boise State University. I teach many different classes in military history, including World War II, history of the military art through the lens of U.S. military history, the history of firearms and tactics, and weapons of mass destruction, CVRN, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear. If studying strategy, weapons technology, and the art of war interests you, I can help. You could visit my office when there isn't a global pandemic. You would see that I am all in on these topics because my office is decorated in bayonets, gas masks, helmets, shell casings, and camo netting. My formal research and writing surrounds weapons of mass destruction, 
and you could read my published articles, but I have more fun teaching these subjects. Now, if you want to ask me questions about studying here at Boise State, I will have no problem answering those questions. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dr. Leslie Madsen, and I study history in the age of disaster. I ask questions about what the role of historians should be in our age of existential threats and accelerating catastrophes like climate change, pandemics, mass shootings, and terrorism. So, for example, what do you think should happen to all those shrines that appear following mass shootings? And what should the role of historians be when communities are being ravaged by climate change? How might we support communities as they determine what from their culture and their past to carry forward, even if as they have to abandon their homelands? These are deep and difficult questions, and I ask them not just in my research, but also in my classes, where we study long-term trauma as well as current day pressures. As part of this effort, I bring in the voices of people from the past as well as current day writers who are or were African-American, Chicanx, Native American, and who hold other marginalized identities. These are voices you probably didn't hear in your high school history classes for a number of reasons. First of all, they just aren't in the textbooks. Second, your high school history teachers probably when they were in college and in their continuing professional development, didn't learn about any of this stuff. So now it's your chance to do so. In my classes, I help you develop the skills and the knowledge you need, as well as the resilience to move forward and to be able to effect change in your community based on evidence from the past and the present. I hope you join me in some of those classes. I look forward to meeting you.